Hi, I'm George Callis, and you're watching This Sea Ranch Life. Today our guest is Mark Godley, who's one of the members of the Board of Directors of the Sea Ranch. Mark will be speaking to us today about the budgeting process at the Sea Ranch and give us some hints about that process and where we might be. Let's welcome Mark Godley. Okay, cool. Um, thanks, Mark, uh, for joining me this morning. Uh, Hey viewers, I've got Mark Godley, who's one of our board members uh, at the Sea Ranch. And uh, Mark and I are going to discuss a little bit uh, the budgeting process here at Sea Ranch, which, uh, which the staff and board are at, are at the early stages of. And we're going to hear a little bit about the process and what, what may or may not be included in, in the budget and the timing of it, how that process is going to play out where things are going to end up as far as what members are going to pay and what members are going to get for that and what are the what are the drivers in the budget this morning i know that's what i'm thinking mark does that sound good to you that sounds great george thanks for inviting me and i look forward to member input and feedback as a result of this meeting yeah absolutely let's talk a little bit about the process just to bring everyone uh just bring everyone up to speed i, I see kind of three three subsets to the process. One, what's the timing of putting a budget together at Sea Ranch? Two, who prepares this? Who prepares the budget? And three, what's the review process? Who look who looks at it? How do how do comments and changes come in? Could you address that process from Yeah, for sure. Um and keep me honest that I'm going to hit all three points, please. Um, okay. As, as far as timeline, um, it's quite an elongated and involved process. I'm not going to go through every point by point, but suffice to say, um, you know, the, the fiscal year for the association is um, April to March, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, but yet the budget process starts uh, the previous September. So I think that's six plus months, maybe even longer. Um, and it starts at the staff level. Um, we're very fortunate to have uh, Ellen as our CFO, and she's been doing this literally for decades uh, with yeah. the association. This she is, works. This is Ellen Beekner for viewers who may not who may not know Ellen, our longtime CFO at the Sea Ranch. Thanks. Thank you, George. Yeah. So she works in concert with our community manager um, and all the the department heads in putting together um, some very very rough numbers. Um, so the staff works at September, October, November, and then as of November, the staff starts to read out to the finance committee um, as to what they're thinking. It's very preliminary. There's a lot of placeholders and assumptions. Um, and then the finance committee, uh, November, December, January, February, really um, starts being involved in the process. They're not decision makers. Um, they are purely representations of, of membership to provide input, um, question assumptions, confirm math, and ultimately the finance committee then um, provides their input to the board uh, on a February, March timeframe, which is when the board starts officially chiming in and ultimately voting. So the ownership of the budget, the creation of the budget is staff level, the ownership of, of decisions of the budget is the board and the finance committee is providing expertise uh, throughout the process to both staff and board. Right. Um, and, the, and then we certainly have members who are familiar with this process that attend the finance committee meetings, that attend board meetings, and they are providing in input as members as well throughout Correct. throughout that entire process. So let's let's reiterate the finance committee, uh, which is a committee that reports to the board, and the board and uh, the policy the, committee and is a policy committee. That means the board makes appointments to the finance committee. You don't just show up and you're a member. The board yeah. formally appoints appoints people. Uh, and uh, maybe another way to put the, fi the finance committee sounds like to me operates a little bit like the Congressional Budget Office does to the U.S. Congress. Sure. They review sure. budgets, they do analysis, they ask questions, they, they add up numbers and check if everything looks good. So they, they, they're, they, they're sort of that intermediate step in the process between staff and board. Yeah, and, and I think it's got 10 people on it at this point, nearly 10, if not 10. Right. We have former board members on it. We have we have current CPAs on it. 
we have business owners, we have former auditors. I mean, it's a very, very accomplished group. And um, we, they also have a lot, uh, a lot of historical, um, uh, historical experience. Yeah. So they've been doing, they, this isn't their first time going through the process. So they, they can draw on that expertise and bring it into the existing time. Yeah, uh, even though we have new things we're grappling with, some of that historical knowledge is very useful. And Mark, the the meetings of the finance committee, where the where the draft budget is discussed and looked at and analyzed, that's open to every C Ranch member. Okay. Absolutely, there was supposed to be a meeting uh, of the finance committee yesterday, which is the fourteenth, because we're all going through these. Um, catastrophic storms and, and power outages, et cetera, that finance committee meeting was pushed to next Saturday, the 21st. And the entire agenda is to interact with staff, talk about where we are with the budget, look at line items and provide feedback to staff before it is then brought to probably the most official meeting in this process is a joint meeting between the finance committee and the board that had been scheduled for the 21st, which has now been pushed to February 4th. Gotcha, gotcha. And that meeting also, that joint meeting between finance committee and the board is also open to, to members and, and there will be time for members to make comments or observations. And yes, absolutely. And in the agenda packet, I'm not sure if it's published yet, uh, probably not. But the agenda packet for the February 4th meeting will have the second, if not third iteration um, of the staff creating the budget with input from various people that have seen um, prior versions. There has been version one published. I wouldn't look at it personally because there were so many assumptions. There were so many placeholders that have already been updated. I would wait to this next version leading into that joint Finance right. committee board meeting. Right, so uh, we'll see draft uh, two, three, or maybe draft four at that point, depending on how many iterations uh, That's right. it's, it's gone to. And members will be able to see that and look at that line by line, and absolutely, and and make their comments or or suggestions or whatever uh, happens. And, and just to give you a sense of how extensive it is, I mean, I do have a copy of what was going to be used uh, in draft format for the twenty first. The document's fifty four pages. Right. So this is not a back of the napkin process. It is unbelievably detailed. And, um, you know, Ellen and our CMs, now Menka, uh, do an, an, a really incredible job of, of giving us uh, a lot of information to understand historically where we've been and where we might be going. Right. And uh, I might... I might add, or you can comment. It's it's uh, uh, it's it's not just the, the CFO Ellen, but uh, department heads are also funneling their information, their cost information, up the chain, and and committees, all the various committees at Sea Ranch pr provide provide numbers for for their activities and uh, all those uh, all those things. So there's there's a lot of a lot of data coming in from a variety of sources that they're trying to distill. And, and get into a draft budget. Absolutely, and it's important also to note for members that might not be aware, this process is also governed by yeah. Davis Sterling, which is a state law that, that provides the legal framework for how common interest development corporations, of which we are as an HOA, how we have to um, manage this process publish it to membership, allow for mem member input, et cetera. So we're not just winging it. Um, we've got, some, we've got yeah. some guide rails by David Sterling as to how we have to provide um, uh, uh, not just input, but, but transparency to right. our members in this process. Right. And then uh, doesn't David Sterling mandate a date by which uh, we have to have a final budget, that, that the board has to approve a final budget? Am I correct uh, on that? It, it, it does, and I'm going to, um, uh, I'm, I'm going to admit that I don't know exactly what that is. Yeah, Maybe I, you I, have it, I have it, I have in my mind it's April 15th, but that, that may not be, that may not be correct. We'll, yeah, you know what, I, we'll come, we'll come back and correct that date. If I, you know I did, I did purchase uh, the David Sterling uh, 
policy manual, but I don't have that date uh, yeah. off the top of my head. As suffice to say, there is last, a... last year we did run into a time crunch over that date, whether it's April yeah. 15th Maybe or 30th. Maybe it's March. I, I can't remember it. Yeah. But we, we hope not to have that same time crunch this year. Right. We'd like to hash, you'd like to hash through all the items, line by line, everything in all the weeks and months ahead of that legal date so that we're not, we're not down to the final hour, uh, 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 still, still throwing numbers around at right. that point. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Good. Um, is a general question, and this is, uh, you know, this may be tough to answer at this early stage, um, if, at least from your your point of view, one 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 board member's opinion. Um, what is what do we think about the level of services that members will receive? That's because in the end, that's what that's what uh, the budget is about. What services the association provides uh, to members and for our infrastructure and for all of our needs? Where where do we where do we fall? Are we going to be the same? Or are, we, are we making jumps up? Are we going to cut yeah. back? So or do we know? I'll I'll answer that not just in my treasurer role on the board as a new newly elected board member, but also as a, I think it was four or five prior years on the finance committee. Um, and also someone who, well, I'll leave it at that. So I don't know of a single sea rancher that um, isn't, who, who's delved into the numbers, who isn't blown away by the fiscal uh, efficiency of uh, the Sea Ranch. I mean, what's very what's very public is the architectural grandeur of the Sea Ranch, and the community grandeur, and the and the the land grandeur. But I would argue the, that the financial um, history is unbelievably impressive. You know, the water company. Um, uh, you know. Uh, setting up Sea Ranch Connect. I mean, there's, you know, having cell towers that um, help provide service to us. Um, and we're benefiting, in my opinion, uh, in, we're benefiting by unbelievably low mm -hmm. um, monthly dues because of the work of our predecessors over, over decades. Um, so, that's my personal opinion. I've also heard that from others. At the same time, I think we have some organizational debt. Um, I think um, uh, historically, dues have doubled about every 15 years. Mm -hmm. And I think we should all assume that that is going to continue to happen. Mm -hmm. Now, um, Ultimately, as a membership, we have to think about the exact point you brought up, George. What is the level of service that we want versus need versus are willing to pay for? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would be great to have security 24-7, 365. Um, how many calls would really come in at 2 in the morning? Are we willing to pay to have someone sitting and available uh, as one example. Yeah. Yes, we've talked about a visitor center or a meeting place. We've talked about a village. Are we willing to pay for that? Right. We just came through, a, we're in the middle of a, a historically unprecedented storm. There are hundreds of trees down. Uh, what is that gonna cost? Um, so, this is the conversation we're going to need to have collectively, not just for this budget cycle, but over the next couple years as we grapple with costs, insurance costs um, sure. are going through the roof. So the I will say this, the budgets I've seen assume historic levels of service. Uh, that doesn't mean the budget financially is the same. Right. The staff is assuming historic levels of service, and we need to have a dialogue about, do we want to reduce some levels of service? Do we want to increase some? How does that pencil out financially? And are we willing to pay for it? Right, right. And we've had a number of, from at least, this is strictly my opinion, we've, uh, you know, we, like every organization, have faced increased costs of everything. Um, 
literally literally everything we've all watched the news and seen that inflation over the past 12 months took a took as big a jump up as it has in the, uh, since 50 years prior so that hits us too that it costs us more to buy the stuff we need to run to run the seed range so inflation yeah. is certainly a real a real pressure uh, uh we went through correct me here over the last year or maybe two years we we reviewed um, salaries of our staff when, and we collectively concluded that they were below market. And in some cases were simply uh, not really fair. And so we made some increases across the board uh, to bring, to bring really talented people within a fair market, uh, fair market range, because we, we recognized it was going to be difficult to keep, keep talented people on board uh, and expect them to work at below below market salaries. So there's been a lot of pressures like that. I can't imagine what the insurance uh, issues have, have gone on, but um, I think we all know individually, you know, all of our insurance rates have gone in, in terms of homeowners insurance. We've all, we've all experienced that uh, lots of times. Yeah. Gone. So let, let me, let me build George on a couple of things you mentioned, because I, I'm guessing that when all is said and done with the budget, uh, dues are going to go up yeah. and I suspect they're going to go up into the low 300s. Mm -hmm. um, and the factors that are driving that, and I'm happy to talk to people individually. We don't have enough time to go through them all in great detail, but they are. Um, one, staffing in two different ways. You mentioned uh, compensation, and it is true that we have been under market in general. We've been under market in what we've paid people. And so we're now going through a process uh, where we're looking to get people to market because at the end of the day, the staff provides incredible value. They're the ones um, making sure that Del Mar Center is open. They're the ones interacting with Cal Fire. They're the ones doing welfare checks. Um, they're the ones reviewing uh, plans to build one's house um, or put in generators. So staff we want to make sure that they're feeling feeling appreciated and they're compensated fairly that's one driver of the possibility of of the budget go, uh, or dues going up second is we have been we have had open staff positions for years mm -hmm. um the great resignation of covid um impacted us um any you know dcem um, uh, and two things have happened. We've been understaffed and we've been overwhelmed with properties changing hands and people wanting to build. Right. So, um, you know, if folks want to get their permits responded to in a reasonable period of time, we've got a staff to a level to support that. So the other thing that's happening is we've historically for the last three to four years been 20% below FTEs. Yeah. One of the things Warren did an amazing job of is he filled those roles and we still have a couple more open, but we're now looking at being fully staffed. Right. So you look at getting people to market, filling unfilled staff positions, and we've got some cost increases. The other factors are insurance mm -hmm. and one that people might not uh, think about, propane. Um, propane is how we heat our pools. Mm -hmm. Today, there's proposals to move away from that, but we have been, uh, just like you and I have been impacted with our Sea Ranch homes and the cost of propane going up, that's the biggest cost to uh, Olson, Moonraker, and Delmar. And so that has a, that has a pretty big impact uh, from a budgetary standpoint. And there's one other thing that I won't go into a lot of details unless you want me to, but there's this concept of carryover, going back to Davis Sterling, right. which is any unspent money from prior years and what's happened with carryover is having a big impact on this budget cycle. And, and is that because our carryovers have, have our carryovers not been as great in the last couple of years? Right. So, so the, again, back to Davis Sterling. Davis Sterling yeah. requires, if we have any unspent money yeah. from the current year budget, the, the, the association can't keep it. Right. They can't put it in, in a fund for a rainy day uh, for when we have to, you know, yeah. repair miles of fences along Route 1. And that's by law. 
That's by law. Yeah. They have to return it to membership. And, and we don't physically return it to membership. What happens is we have a line item in the budget called carryover, which is the unspent money from last year's budget brought forward to reduce the, the dues impact. Right. And the reason that's having uh, a pretty, and by the way, a finance committee member, um, Marge, I don't know how to pronounce her last name, so I won't try, but yeah. Marge, who's a CPA and incredible, yeah. she's done two articles in the bulletin, yeah. one in December and one in January that goes into a lot of detail yeah. about I think it's, I think it's Marge Entwistle, I think is who you're thinking Thank of. you for, yeah. for the pronunciation. Yeah. I would have butchered yeah. it. But if you read those articles, you will note that the carryover two years ago was $31. The carryover this current year mm -hmm. cycle is $36. Part of the reason that, and that's historically high, we also had uh, government money. We had PPP money yeah. that we received as a loan that got turned into a, a grant right. built in there. The carryover that is expected for this year's budget cycle, yeah. $16. Yeah. So a $20, if we don't spend a dollar more right. in yeah. staff, in resiliency, in cutting down dying trees, if we don't spend a dollar more, we have 20 less dollars a month yeah. Uh, in, Her, yeah. In, yeah. In, in member dues. Or member dues would be $20 more purely because right. the carryover is less. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And just so our viewers understand those those numbers, when you said sixteen dollars is the carryover, that's per member per month. Thank you. That's a, so, a dues equivalent. Dues so that's equivalent. a dues equivalent. Yeah, exactly. A dues equivalent multiplied by our over twenty two hundred members that we have. That's so right. that's that turns into a sizable, a sizable big number, a sizable a number. number. But like you say, the carryover this year isn't going to be nearly as big as it has been in past years. Yeah, and and, 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 and that gets. Yeah. The line for people to think about or remember is if we don't change a single level of service right. to 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 create the same budget, all of all members will need to pay twenty dollars more a month for right. just the status quo. Now I'm not saying dues are gonna go up twenty dollars. They right. may go up thirty, they may go up five, they may right. go they may go down. We don't know yet. But just for like services, because of the carryover going down. Right. We're looking at twenty dollars more a month per member. Yeah, yeah, and that's just a budget reality that every every budget cycle we we face that carryover and how how it impacts how it impacts us. So yeah, great. Um, Mark, why don't we hit on these dates again? I'm sorry. Do you want to add anything else about about this process at this? Uh, at this well, point? the only other thing I, I want to mention at some point is is um, something I've been beating a drum about for two years going back to the finance committee, which is as an organization, I think we need to start looking towards augmenting our member dues mm -hmm. with other ways to bring in revenue to the association. And I could talk more about that if you want at some point. Okay, okay. Yeah, I think that we could probably treat that as a separate program. You've done some writing, uh, you've promoted, you've uh, put, put some of that in writing that's been publicly available. So. Um, <laughs> we may come back to that in another uh, in another session or uh, sure. uh, or everything, but um, all really good. Let's uh, real quickly hit the, let's hit these dates again that members should be sure. aware of. So the next date to be aware of is twenty uh, first, January twenty first, and that is a finance committee meeting, and they will they will be reviewing analyzing the draft budget as it stands at that time. Absolutely correct. Next Saturday, yeah. I believe it's in the morning, either nine or ten. It will be up yeah. on the finance committee website. If, right. uh, if it's and not members there. members can attend that virtually or uh, in person if if they choose to, and that draft budget will be attached to the agenda. Pe members are free to to look yeah. at it and and provide comments. So that's January twenty first. And then the next uh, key meeting is the joint finance committee and and board meeting. And and give us that date again. That's February February fourth. February 4th, same thing. The, 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 the budget, the draft budget will have evolved to the next, to the next level. 
next steps and the board will hear from the finance committee and members will be free to chime in uh at that point so those are and those both are the of those dates. will be both of those will be recorded if you're not available right. i would encourage right. people to listen to the recordings and you know the board gets a fair number of emails on on money yeah. um, and we get great ideas from members. One of, I mean, there's a number of revenue source ideas we've heard from members that I think are going to be put into this year's budget cycle. So, yeah. so keep the feedback coming, please. Right, members should do that. It's an open process, and uh, like everyone says, this is this is our HOA collectively. So we all do that. Mark, thanks a bunch. Anything else you want to add before we uh, call it a wrap? So the only thing I want to say is, um, you know, there are other ways. Um, to participate in the process. Mm -hmm. There's a, for those of you who, who have found the Slack uh, um, channel or Slack community yeah. for Sea Ranch, there's a budget channel that we have 40 or 50 people on that as these things come out, they, they percolate up and start chatting about. Um, that's something that you can do. Um, there will ultimately be a board meeting. I think it's slated right now for January 25th. I don't know if it's going to move or not. Mm -hmm. That um, would be the budget approval process, the, the okay. budget approval meeting. Um, so that would be another one to participate in. Um, and I'll throw out one more uh, idea that I, I, I would love for people to consider. I, I'm going to okay. do it myself, which is um, there's nothing to prevent any of us from contributing more than the dues amount in your monthly contribution. There you go. To those of us who are still in our peak earning years, you think 292 is a great bargain, write a check for 300. Wherever we end up next year, um, um, if you think that's a bargain, throw in an extra 10, 15, 20 bucks a month. It, it would be very appreciated by the association to have a little bit more cash than budgeted coming in every month. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Mark, thanks so much for taking time and giving us uh, your point of view as as a you know as one of our board members, and especially to to illuminating the process uh, for members and how this is going to proceed, and 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 a bit about what you foresee uh, happening. Um, we'll look. George, forward. thanks. Yeah, thanks absolutely. for having me. You betcha. Okay. Members, take a look on the TSRA website once again for any of these dates, any of these meetings. Everyone's free to attend in person or virtually and uh, and get your comments. Uh, speak up about your comments. Once again, hey, right. thanks, Mark. Appreciate thanks, it. Sure. Be safe. All right. You Bye -bye. too. Take care. You've been watching This Sea Ranch Life. And today we've spoken with Mark Godley about the budgeting process here at the Sea Ranch. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again next time at This Sea Ranch Life.